everybody. I'm Alice K. Ruckelhouse from Suffering Well, and today we're going to talk about St. Clair. So St. Clair is kind of special to me because I lived part of my life in Santa Clara, actually two different times, from kindergarten until fourth grade through fourth grade, and then from 1984 five, I think, until 1993. So um, yeah, so I lived over 10 years under the auspices of St. Clair. <laughs> and I, I was always just very curious about her. But as a Protestant, I saw her a lot differently than I do now as a Catholic. St. Clair was born July 16th, 1194, and she lived until 1253. She is the patron saint of eye disease, of laundry, and of television. And the reason that she is the patron saint of television, I thought this was very cool, is because when she was really ill, she wasn't able to go to mass, but she saw the mass playing out on the wall of her room just like she had a big screen TV or something. <laughs> so she's the patron saint of television, which is very cool. So when she was 18 years old, she, she heard St. Francis of Assisi speak. And that's the town that she was from. She was also from Assisi. And she decided that she wanted to follow him. So Palm Sunday of 1212, she went to follow him and he cut off her hair and gave her a plain robe and got rid of her really, really nice clothes and veil. So he set her up with the Benedictine nuns. Her father tried to come and force her home, but Francis sent her even farther away so that she could just live in peace, the kind of life that she wanted to live following after God. Her sister, who became Agnes, joined her there, and they lived with the, with the Benedictines for a while, but then eventually they were able to set up their own uh, monastery. She was really devoted to Francis, so much so that they called her the little Francis or the altar Francis. I remember reading one time that Francis was kind of treating her meanly and probably because he liked her, but you know how boys are. <laughs> if they like a girl, they have to pull her hair and stuff. Um, anyway, um, I think he probably struggled with his feelings for her and had to kind of like overcompensate by being mean to her or something. I don't know. That's just my opinion, but that's kind of what I get from this story. Anyway, his brother monks finally talked him into being kind to her. She was so devoted to Francis that she even took care of him as he grew old. That was really sweet. Claire's order had a radical commitment to poverty, following after St. Francis, of course. Then in 1224, some soldiers attacked the city of Assisi. She took the Blessed Sacrament out, and this is why you'll often see pictures of her holding the monstrance, and she's usually got a cloth around it, so she's not touching it. But she took the Blessed Sacrament out and placed it on the wall where the enemies could see it, and she knelt down and prayed, Oh, Lord, protect these sisters whom I cannot protect now. She heard him say, I will keep them always in my care. And guess what? They suddenly became really frightened, and they all left, the soldiers, not the girls. <laughs> <laughs> so they got scared off by the Blessed Sacrament and her faith. She died at 59 years old, two days after Pope Innocent IV declared that her order would be governed by her rule. So she got to see things completed the way that she wanted them to be, that they would continue to be women of poverty. Um, people sometimes said that they were too poor, but she insisted, how could you be poor when you have Jesus in you. I think that's really cool. I want to read a prayer to you from St. Clair. And as you listen to this, maybe close your eyes and imagine St. Clair with the monstrance, showing how certain she was that Jesus would protect her and the sisters and just the power of the real presence of Jesus. She says, I come, O Lord, unto your sanctuary to see the life and food of my soul. As I hope in you, O Lord, inspire me with that confidence which brings me to your holy mountain. Permit me, divine Jesus, to come closer to you, that my whole soul may do homage to the greatness of your majesty, that my heart, with its tenderest affections, may acknowledge thine infinite love, 
that my memory may dwell on the admirable mysteries here renewed every day, and that the sacrifice of my whole being may accompany thine. Isn't that beautiful? And now we have a prayer about St. Clair. God of mercy, you inspired St. Clair with the love of poverty. By the help of her prayers, may we follow Christ in poverty of spirit and come to the joyful vision of your glory in the kingdom of heaven. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I love you all. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.